Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to give you an intro to our new Vector Embeddings database field. Embeddings are numerical representations of data that are used in conjunction with typically an AI model to determine complex relationships and semantic meanings between your pieces of data. Essentially what this means is that instead of very simple, find me this specific piece of data type queries, you can now use those relationships along with the model of your choice to essentially talk and ask questions to the data that you have stored inside of your Xano database. For this video, we will be using OpenAI to generate and work with our embeddings. And by the end of this video, you should have a basic understanding of how to use embeddings with OpenAI in Xano. If you have a different model that you wanna work with, that's totally fine. We have a lot more examples coming in the very near future. But for now, this should get you started. So let's hop over to Xano and take a look. So here we are in Xano, and you can see I have a, just a few records in my database table here. And these records are all literally just copy and paste from our Xano documentation. My goal here is to essentially build a chat bot that can talk to the Xano documentation that I have stored in my database. I have a text column which contains the actual data and then a page number. Now I want to add embeddings to this table. So I'm going to click this plus sign here. I'm going to go to the vector field type. I'm going to call this embeddings. We need to specify a number of items. So essentially a number of vectors to store per piece of data. The amount that you're going to specify here is essentially a balance between how much you actually need for your data and what is dictated by the model that you're using to generate your embeddings. For my example, I'm going to use 1536, which is what the model that I'm using to generate embeddings dictates as the maximum amount of embeddings that it will return. That being said, this is probably a little bit too much in practice and you will want to maybe float it somewhere around a thousand, again, depending on your specific use case. You want to ensure that you do not go over 2000 when using embeddings in Xano. If you're new to this, because I know I still am, it may sound like it makes the most sense to have as many vectors as possible to have the most precise relationships to find with your data. But there is essentially a concept of diminishing returns here. And you need to start thinking about efficiency when actually working with this data as well. So there's a lot that goes into it. Again, it's very use case specific. If you have any questions, definitely let us know. But this will work for our example. So let's go ahead and save that. So now we have an embeddings column here, and we need to utilize the OpenAI API to actually generate our embeddings. So how do we do that? Well, we could set up a function stack to loop through our data and query the API for each record and then store those embeddings in our table. However, there is a much more efficient way to do that, and that is using database triggers. Now, if you're new to database triggers in Xano, that's totally fine. It's still pretty new. But the way that triggers work is that any time an event takes place on your table, whether that is a record being added, updated, uh, deleted, or your table is cleared, you can immediately have a function stack execute based on that modified data. So to access our database triggers, we'll go up here to the corner and we will choose triggers. And I have a trigger already set up here called generate embeddings. The way that triggers work is they have a defined set of inputs. So we have new, which is if we're editing a record, for example, this is the new version of the record. And then we have the old version of the record. If we were just adding a record, old will be empty and all we'll have is new. We have the action, which is the actual action that took place on the database. So that's an insert, an update, a delete. And we have the data source. In our function stack, we have a very simple API request to OpenAI to generate embeddings for the data that we've added to our database. You can get a curl command straight from OpenAI's documentation to copy and paste right into Xano to set this up. For my example today, we're going to be using the text embedding three small model. And then we just send our OpenAI API key along with that request. And our trigger is set up and ready to go. This is set to run on inserts and updates. So anytime records are added or edited. So let's go ahead and publish our changes here. 
Let's go back to the database. And now I just want to trigger the trigger. Now let's go ahead and edit these records so we can have those embeddings generated. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear out that page number here. We'll refresh and you can see those embeddings have been generated. And now I'm going to go through and do this with all of my other records. Okay, so we've edited all those records. Let's refresh one more time. And there are my embeddings ready to be used in my other function stacks. Now, before we move on, there is one more thing that we have to do on this table, and that is indexing. Now, if you've been a Xano user for any period of time, you've probably heard about indexing. Indexing is essentially a way for your table to understand the data that you're looking for and find it super fast, kind of like the index in the back of a book. Typically, you would only apply an index to a table once the data set gets very large. So maybe five to 10,000 records, depending on how large your schema is. With vectors, it's a little bit different. And we actually just want to be indexing from the start. And that is really just because of the volume of vectors that are typically applied even to one single piece of data. So we're going to go ahead and apply an index here. We'll choose our vector index type. We'll choose our embeddings field. And for this example, OpenAI wants us to use inner product. So we will choose that. We'll click save. And now my embeddings column is indexed. Again, it's very important. If you're using embeddings, just apply that index to that field from the start. So now that we have our vectors in our database, we can start using them in a function stack. So let's just build one from scratch here to ask a question of the data that we have stored in our database. I'm going to add an input here and we'll just call this question. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to generate embeddings based on the question that's being asked. So let's head over to OpenAI's documentation. We'll copy this curl command. In Xano, we will add an external API request. We'll click import curl. And we'll just paste that right in there. So our API request is pretty much ready to go. Let's set up our OpenAI key. And let's define our input here. So right now it just has a text string. We'll go ahead and choose our question input. We'll update and save, and let's run that just so you can see what the output looks like. So I'm going to ask it a question. What is an API group in Xano? So here is the response returned, and these are our embeddings uh, based on the question that we just provided to OpenAI. So now that we have these embeddings and we have the embeddings stored in our database, we can actually query our database to find related data. So we'll add a new function to our function stack. This is going to be a query all records on our Xano documentation table. We're going to head over to the output tab. The first thing we're going to do is add an eval. An eval is essentially a way for you to customize your response with additional fields. This could be from other tables or it could be from the table that you're working with, really just kind of depending on exactly what you're doing. In this example, we want to add a similarity eval. So the way that these embeddings work behind the scenes is they judge similarity between two pieces of data. So how similar are these vectors from our question to the vectors in our database? So let's choose our embeddings field and we'll call this field similarity. We're going to add a filter to this and we have some new vector filters available. Again, this is going to be a little bit different from you just depending on the model that you're using and the type of index that you have on that embeddings column. We will choose inner product for this. And now we need to supply the embeddings from the API request. To do that, I'm going to take a look at this response here. I'm just going to copy it. We'll go back to our eval. I'm going to choose my API one variable and we'll click subpath and I'll just paste that response right in there. And then I can dial down specifically to where those embeddings lie, which is right here. We'll save that. Now we're almost done. We need to make a couple of adjustments to our return. It's important to use paging for this because you do want to 
essentially limit the pieces of data that are returned by your query. And that's really just about efficiency. I'm going to say I want up to two records returned. And that's, you know, my data set is very small. So yours may change here just based on how much data you actually have. And of course, you do also want to consider the cost for actually generating a response to the data that you're sending, because as you know, this is all about usage-based pricing and it can get expensive. We also want to sort by our similarity field, and we want to do this in ascending order. This ensures that we are returning the most similar results first and our index is being used properly. We'll save our changes. And we have just built our query. So we are all set there. We can go ahead and take a look at what that response looks like. So you can see we have our records returned here. Now that we have our similar records returned, we need to send those back to OpenAI to actually get an answer to our question. We can head back to OpenAI's documentation and get a curl command to copy. Back in Xano, we will add another external API request and paste our curl command. Let's add our OpenAI key first. And now we need to modify the messages that this is sending just to craft our request. And for this example, we'll be using GBT 3.5 Turbo. So the first thing we need to do is provide a prompt. Now I'm not a prompt engineer or anything like that, but I think we can build something that works here. Okay, so we have our prompt. It just says you are an assistant trained on the documentation for Xano. You're gonna answer this question based on the pieces of documentation that I have given you. So we'll update that. Now we need to provide our question. And for that, we'll just use our input. We can get rid of this example message because we don't need that. And now we need to provide the data returned from the database. And we can do that by just pointing to the variable. So we'll do Xano documentation one dot text. Now we're returning multiple records here. So if all I do is reference that text field, it's going to return as an array, which we don't really want. We just want plain text. So we're going to fix that by adding a filter. That filter is called join. And we'll just put a comma separator in there. So this should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and save our changes. We will return that API to response in our results and let's see how it goes. So we are asking the question, what is an API group in Xano? Okay, so here is our request. And then finally we have our response. It says an API group in Xano is a way to organize and group API endpoints. You can move or clone API endpoints, so on and so forth. So this has answered the question based on our documentation that is returned from our query all records step. And this is all using those vector embeddings to determine the similarity, the complex and semantic relationships between our multiple pieces of data, all to generate the answer that you see here. Now, vectors can be a little bit confusing, especially for starting off. I know that they were for me. So I'm gonna kind of draw you a little example here that will hopefully make this easy to understand. So I am going to, I'm gonna draw a little point here and I'll add some text here and we'll say, this is API groups. And again, this is working off of that example of our Xano documentation. And we're gonna add another one here and this is going to be naming API endpoints. Okay, now we're going to do one more. I'm going to make this one a different color. And we're going to call this one database indexes. So we have two pieces of data that are pretty similar. They might have something to do with each other. And then we have database indexes, which has nothing to do with API groups or how to name your API endpoints. You can think of your vectors as essentially points on a map. And that map is what 
can represent the similarity between your multiple pieces of data. So let's take this API groups one, we'll drop it right here. And then we'll take this naming API endpoints one, and maybe that one is like right here. But database indexes is gonna be all the way over here because again, it has nothing to do with either of these. So when we ask a question such as, what is an API group? The magic of vectors will know that this is all pretty similar here. What it's not going to do as long as our query is set up properly is it's not going to include this database indexes piece of data because it's way too far away. So we know that it is just completely dissimilar to the question that we're asking. So once we have embeddings for our question and our data, we can gauge that similarity and get the results that we are expecting. There's probably a host of better resources to explain this in a more technical way, but I did want to at least give you a primer on how this works as you start to work with embeddings in Xano. I really hope you found this video helpful and we cannot wait to see how you use vector embeddings inside of your Xano applications. If you have any questions at all, please leave them down in the comments below. You can also reach out to us on the Xano community at community.xano.com or via support chat inside of Xano. We have more content showing you how to use vectors on the way very soon. So make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of that. And we will see you in the next one.